A jak ich puścimy, to zaraz ich tutaj tysiące będzie. Słuchajcie, ja chcę też pomagać. Na pewno się przydam, mogę cokolwiek robić. Mam całkiem dobrą kondycję. Triple Oscar nominee Agnieszka Holland's Green Border, which will premiere in competition at the Venice Film Festival before going on to Toronto Film Festival and New York Film Festival, has sold to multiple territories. Variety has been granted access to an exclusive clip from the film and Holland's notes on the production, which we quote from below, again exclusively. The film's international sales agency, Films Boutique, has sold the film to the following distributors and territories. We're seen in Spain, and Elixpiel in Austria, Kino Pavaceris for the Baltics, Artfest in Bulgaria, Magic Box in Slovakia, Vivia in Slovenia, Vertigo in Hungary, and Bioparadise in Iceland. The film, as previously announced, Green Border is set in the treacherous and swampy forests that make up the so-called Green Border between Belarus and Poland, where refugees from the Middle East and Africa, trying to reach the European Union, are trapped in a geopolitical crisis, cynically engineered by Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko. In an attempt to provoke Europe, refugees are lured to the border by propaganda promising easy passage to the EU. Pawns in this hidden war, the lives of Julia, a newly minted activist who has given up her comfortable life, Jan, a young border guard, and a Syrian family intertwine. In her as yet unpublished director's notes, seen exclusively by Variety, Holland writes, More than 30 years ago, I made a film, Europa, Europa about a Jewish boy who, to survive the Holocaust, first assumed the identity of a Stalinist communist youth, and then a soldier of the Wehrmacht and a student of an exclusive Hitler youth school, becoming a young Nazi. It was 1989 and the Berlin Wall had just fallen. The double title was meant to express the duality of the European tradition. Europe of our aspirations, the cradle of culture and civilization, the rule of law and democracy, human rights, equality and fraternity. But on the other hand, Europe as the cradle of the worst crimes against humanity, selfishness, and hatred. Holland contrasts the treatment of Ukrainian refugees with that of the migrants from outside Europe. Once again, many refugees are wandering around the woods on the Polish-Belarusian border, once again being tortured, pushed back to Belarus and dying. The oppression of the activists rescuing them is getting harsher and the behavior of the Polish border guards, the same ones who carry Ukrainian children across the border with tenderness and empathy, is becoming more brutal. This difference in the treatment of these two different groups of war refugees brutally exposes what we try to hide, our European racism. The people and events we depict are not accompanied by the pathos of heroism and patriotism. The basic difference between the refugees in our story and those who are crossing Ukraine's borders today is simple. The color of their skin, they have all been confronted with a choice none of them was prepared for, but which they have to face. The protagonists of the other threads of our story also face such a choice. The different points of view come together to create as complete a picture as possible. I think that in their story, just as in a drop of water, our European duality is reflected.